Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to Rich Reviews and welcome to Salon Privé 2022. So the Platinum Collection has been put together for this year to commemorate the Platinum Jubilee year for the Queen. It's also the 75th anniversary for Ferrari, but obviously not all of these are Ferraris. So let's walk you around a lot of the top cars that are here today and give you some insight into the sort of machinery that's been brought along. So first of all, let's cover off these F1 McLarens. You can see here, they're both painted in what was really pretty much the default color scheme for McLaren F1s. At my, my normal viewers will know that the McLaren F1 is pretty much my second favorite car, second to the Mura, to the Lamborghini Mura. See, they've got these beautiful color schemes. These cars respectively are numbered 63 and 64. People who understand the McLaren F1 will know that they epitomized the central seating position, which was copied or duplicated by the speed tail downstream. So this is the McLaren SLR. Now this is number 722. Only 21 of these were ever made and it's made to commemorate the Sterling Moss achievement of winning the Mille Miglia in 1955 with the Mercedes-Benz SLR 300 which was numbered 722. So guys, next to the McLaren SLR we have a Bugatti EB110 Supersport. And next to the Supersport, as we move along, we've got a Lamborghini Diablo. This is actually an SE30. Next to Diablo, we have a 959. Most of you will know that the 959 was in direct competition with the Ferrari F40 for the fastest production car, and the F40 actually won it.
Now this is actually a Lamborghini Miura SVJ and it's the P400. What does P400 stand for? Now 400 is actually the first production model of the Lamborghini Miura and the 400, well the 4 and the 400 stands for posterior 4 which means rear 4 relating to the 3.9 litre transverse mounted V12. And this is the first production model of the Lamborghini Miura, so very important. The P400 was the leading edge, was the first production Miura that was released. This is the Porsche GT1. This is in direct competition with the McLaren F1. They were racing at Le Mans in competition together. So this is an actual Le Mans race car, the GT1. Here we have the Lamborghini Renton. Now these were made in very limited numbers. The Reventon is based on the Lamborghini Murcielago. There was only 21, one for historic museum, coupes that were ever made and only 15 roadsters. And this is obviously a roadster. So only 15 of these cars were ever made and ever produced for the world. Now Lamborghinis, as most of you will know, will never went, never went to a dual plate clutch and, until the hurricane. So this will be a single plate clutch. They kept with that design for its lightness, for the, for the design of the gearbox being a very light gearbox and to produce that bang in the, in the seat of your pants and in your back uh, when, when they change gear under power. Here we're at the Pagani enclosure. This Pagani enclosure is situated just next to the Platinum collection. And here we can see Pagani have brought along a Zonda now this looks like a specialised race edition class version of Zonda, but I'm not absolutely sure. But as we, most people know that Zonda was the first production car that was released by Pagani. Next to the Zonda we have a Huayra in beautiful, in blue, in beautiful polished carbon fibre, gloss carbon fibre. And then next to the Huayra we have another Zonda. Moving around now to the Ferrari enclosure, to the Ferrari section or display section. We have a Ferrari F12 here in Rosso Corsa. Beautiful silver wheels, bright silver wheels. They're called bright silver actually, the colouring for those wheels. It's got a crema interior actually, I think it's got a Sabio interior. Sabio interior is just slightly dulled down from the crema interior, which I believe is a better option with regards to stains from jeans. Next to that we have a Novitec Enlargo F12, which, mm, what can I say about this? I think it's a friggin' eyesore, in my opinion, to be honest, guys. Um, but uh, let me know in the comments below what you think about this. I don't think that uh, Novitech should have been allowed to, to produce something like this on a Ferrari. But that's just my opinion. A lot of you will like it, I'm sure. It's actually painted in matte green, which again, matte colours are not my favourite. But again, there you go. It's a bit of an eyesore, in my opinion. but. But don't let me bias you guys. Let me know what you think of this car. Let me know, let me know what you think of the Novitec in Largo F12 below in the comments. It'd be very interesting to know your thought process. So next to the Novitec in Largo F12, we have a Lusso. This is actually quite a nice spec of Lusso. It's in a dark, it looks like a dark green, but it's actually metallic black. No, it's green. Oh. It's, so this is actually <laughs> this, this is this is actually in a dark green. It does look metallic black, but it is actually a very dark green. I don't know why manufacturers produce these greens that are so dark that they look black. Because in all intents and purposes, and if you've got bright sunlight on it, it looks black. This is why I've come away from choosing the dark verdant option for the Amira, and I've gone to Heffel Yellow because it just looks black under 90% of lighting. In fact, 95% of lighting, it just looks black, pretty much like this Lusso. Now the Lusso next to it is actually in metallic black. So you've got metallic black compared to a dark green. Now if you look at the two different shading of these cars, you can tell that's a green car, but only because you're doing a comparison between an actual black car and a dark green car. I'm not too sure what this colour is called, but this dark green is called on the, on the first Lusso. Beautiful cars though, great V12s. Very, very practical V12, all the most practical V12s you can get in the Ferrari range. And next to the two Lussos we have a Ferrari F8. So this is the F8 Tributo, again Rosso Corsa, you've got the matte black side skirts, dark grey wheels, matte dark grey wheels. The F8 definitive, or made definitive by its scoop to provide aerodynamics downforce on the front of the car 
and the air intakes just above the headlights, which actually I don't like the design look of that. I never did like that design look. And of course the whacking great intercooler um, inputs or the whacking great intercooler grills, which again, I've never liked that sort of design. Some people do, I, I just don't like it personally. I, love, I pre much prefer the cleaner lines, such as the 458. But then I'm gonna say that per perceivably because I own a 458. Um, but you yeah, know that's why I buy a four, buy a bought 458, not a 488, and not an F8 because I just didn't like this styling. I like the cleaner flows. I can understand it. You've got whacking great turbos in these things. To the left of the other enclosure of Ferraris, we've got an F12 here. Obviously, this is Bob's V12 F12. <laughs> Next to that, we've got a 458 Italia. Sorry, 458 Spider. I should know the difference. This is in grigio grey. Next to the 458 Spider, we have another 458 Spider in Bianco. We have another 458 Italia, this time in Giallo Modeno, which is the flat, non-triple layer yellow. Nothing to, nothing to take away from that yellow, it's a beautiful yellow. Next to that, we have another 458 Italia, this time Rosso Corsa with a matte black roof. And next to that, we have another 458 Italia. So this is 458 City. <laughs> So we move along here, we're just gonna cover up some cars outside the food tent. We've got this beautiful Scuderia here in an interesting color, almost like an orange magma color. But I wanna focus a bit more on this car. We've got a beautiful black F50 here. Stunning car. And if you look at the actual suspension settings, the gaps between the tires and, this, and, the, um, and the body, you can see it looks like it has actually been slammed that somebody's dropped the suspension down lower. I don't know whether that's because they've tracked it or what, I don't know but uh, definitely it looks like the suspension has been dropped low unless it's on um, air suspension, which you, just, you just, which you just wouldn't put air suspension on a car like this, surely not. Um, also, they've tinted the windows, so the, the windows are heavily tinted. Quite bizarre that somebody would do that, but it is a beautiful car nonetheless. F50, one of my favorite cars, and in my opinion, I prefer it to the F40. It always garners opinion. A lot of people either prefer the F40 or the F50. For me, it's the F50 because of its racing heritage with the with the F1 race engine. For my son, he prefers the F40. Horses for courses. As we walk along to the Ferrari stand, I just want to cover off the sort of architecture that's here at Salon Privé. You have the main marks all the way around the outskirts of the perimeter, all around the perimeter of the, of the show, of the event. You have the food courts in the center. The Platinum Collection, which is the main display cars, are actually in the center of where the food court is, so in the center of the tents. And we come along here, we just come across to the Ferrari Dick Lovitz stand. Ferrari, Dick Lovitz is always the main show here for Ferrari. Just going to cover off some of the cars here. We have an Atelier, tailor-made Roma. Very, very special high spec. Actually has a special suede interior. And moving along, we have this 125S. This car is of great historical importance. It's actually the first Ferrari that they ever made. And there's only two of them ever made, 1.5 litre. 125S. This is the first car that ever adorned the Ferrari Cavalio badge. Here, numbered 56. <laughs> Moving to the other side of the stand, we have a 296 GTB with the Seto Furiano pack. And this is in, I believe, Azuro Blue. Just gonna cover off some of the cars we have here. We have a GT, a McLaren GT, to my right or to your left, whichever way you look at it. And to my left, we have a 720S. Center stage on the McLaren stand, we have a McLaren Artura in flux green. Then moving to the left-hand side, we have a McLaren Speedtail. Now this takes lending a lot from the F1 McLaren with its three-seater option with a centre seating for the driver. Speedtail because it has a long rear end, which is the Speedtail part of the name. Here at the Lamborghini stand, we have the Technica, the Ultima, and the STO. And then moving along, 
we have here a Lamborghini Performante and at the back we have two Eurises. Moving on here to the Hennessy stand we have a Hennessy Venom F5 Roadster, super super rare. And then to the right hand side of that we have a Hennessy Venom F5 Coupe. We're just going to walk along here to the other enclosures just as we walk past. We're picking up Bugatti here, we've got two Bugatti Chirons at, at forefront. We've got a 16M, which is a Scuderia Spider version. And moving along here, we have a Rosso Corsa Enzo. Now, all Enzos were left hand drive, and these were built around the design of an F1, of the Ferrari F1 cars. Moving towards the back now, right in front of the beautiful Blenheim Palace, which is where these, this event is held, we've got a beautiful Rosso Corsa F40 next to that. We've got an F8 Tributo. Following on for the F8 Tributo, we're supposed to have an Enzo parked here with the namesake there, but unfortunately it's not here. Next to the Tributo, we have an F8 Spider. Next to the F8 Spider, we have a Lusso. And next to the Lusso, we have an SF90 with the Assetto Firiano pack. Next to the SF90, Tristan we have Aglan an 812 Superfast. Next to the 812 Superfast, we have an, uh, another F8 Tasha, Spider. Next to the F8 Spider, we have an 812 Lotus. GTS. And then next to the 812 GTS, we have the pinnacle of the 812 brand, if you like, which is an 812 Competizione in Triple Strato Giallo with a beautiful striped livery. Stunning car. The yeah, one black always works. Next to the Competizione, we have an F8 Spider in matte black. Next to the F8 Spider, we have another F8, but this time an F8 Tributo. We have three 812s, an 812 Superfast, an 812 GTS, and to finish off, we have another 812 Superfast. In the perimeter of the um, eating tents, we've got a set of Ferraris that are lined up here, so we can just go down the line here for you. We've got an 812 Superfast, we've got another 812 Superfast, but this is, um, looks like it's tailor-made. It's in TDF blue, but look at the actual um, silver pinstriping down the side of the sill. And also inside, if you look up the, the metal or meteorological, probably called, the actual fitments inside, the center console and the air vents, etc. Very bespoke, almost like a, a gray enameled or a silver enameled finish. I don't want to say the word hammerite because it uh, devalues the brand. Very bespoke number plate as well, 6ONG, gong. Next to the tailor-made Superfast, we have a piece of spider in Bianco with the stripe, with the blue stripe. It's actually matte carbon. This is in, um, this has got matte blue carbon as well. So um, very bespoke, probably tailor-made as well. Next to that, we have another piece of the spider. And next to that, we have another piece of the spider, this time in matte black. 39 DJ on that number plate. Okay, then coming towards the end, we have the last piece there, which is the piece de coupe. But here we've got the cars that have just won the awards, the MC20. These are just being been awarded the club trophy prizes for various levels. With Maserati here. So here we have a Diablo. Again, these cars are doing a parade because they've won awards. Followed by it, we have a Lamborghini Ultima. Look at a stunning car. Look at the stunning specification of that car. Beautiful. A proper dark green that doesn't look black. So we're going to close out from Salon Privé now for Club Trophy Day. We'll be here tomorrow, so we'll be providing you coverage from that as well, from that day as well. Um, thanks a lot for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, give it a like. If you're not subscribed, please think about subscribing. Very important to us, guys. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video, which will be Salon Privé final day.